Greetings, friends. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for joining our circle today, coming from all over the world, together in our space, working with the energies of the Aquarius new moon. Every month we come, the days following the new moon, to bring our collective intention on the common good, linking our hearts and minds together, focusing on human needs and how it can be achieved in accordance with the plan. Today, we come together to share meditate and strengthen the thought forms of solution for the new economy based on principles of sharing, gifting and abundance. Over to you, Rebecca. Thanks, Alexander. So we just now remind ourselves of our purpose in this project, which we've named the Meditation for the Common Good. And our purpose is to support the manifestation of the spiritual plan for our planet through our group meditation, which focuses group intention for the common good, brings spiritual principles and laws to life, and magnetizes thought forms of solution for practical action. And we're in this month of Aquarius with our topic of the new economy of sharing and gifting and abundance. We're working on the fixed cross, which we're using to explore topic areas related to resourcing and sharing. And as we seek for the perception that will enable the vision and the mechanisms needed for humanity, all of us to understand how to share, we hold space open for the cleansing currents of Aquarius to do their work so that within the vital waxing light of this new moon time, we can enrich our theme. So as we draw together around this intention, I hand over to Tracy, who will lead us in our alignment through the naming circle. Over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Rebecca. As we begin our focus today in this new moon meditation, the naming circle unites our hearts across distance as we begin our alignment and bring ourselves fully into group work. By uniting our hearts in this way, we begin naturally to work telepathically through our group mind. The key to this telepathic work is in the etheric alignment, which creates the group field and allows it to become both a receiving and transmitting agent for higher ideas and energies. We will begin by calling our names into the circle, starting with our organizers and then our action area group members. As your name is called, please unmute yourself, say your name and where you are calling in from. For example, Tracy Arbor calling in from Novi, Michigan, USA. And as we go through this, let us turn our attention to our hearts and the heart center of the group gathered today as each one of us calls ourselves into this circle. Alexander. 
Alexander Ilchuk calling in from Brooklyn, New York, United States. Welcome. Rebecca. Rebecca Hood calling in from the Sunshine Coast, Queensland, Australia. Frida. Frida Kemp calling in from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Welcome. Antoinette. Antoinette de Toy calling in from South Africa. Welcome. Ario. Ario Heinsula from Jyväskylä, from Middle Finland. Welcome. Jeffrey. Jeffrey Swainhart from Minneapolis, Minnesota, in the northern U.S. Welcome. Martha. Martha Gallahue calling in from Weehawken, New Jersey. Welcome. Daniela. Hello, everyone. Daniela here. I'm calling in from Belgium, Brussels, Europe. Welcome. Andrea. Andrea Ross. Today, I'm calling in from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, in central the United States. Welcome. Antoinette. Aneta. Aneta Lüffler from Denmark. Welcome. Avon. Avon Dadison from the San Francisco Eco Bay Area, United States. Welcome. Barbara. Barbara, please unmute yourself. Welcome, Barbara. Birgitta. Greetings, Birgitta Rasmussen from Denmark. Welcome. Bridget. Bridget Murphy calling in from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Welcome. Chris. Chris, please unmute yourself. Oh, I'm sorry, thank you. Chrissy Chaplin calling from Havelock North, New Zealand. Thank you. Welcome. Christine. Seems like there's a problem with sound yeah. with Christine. Yeah. Welcome, Christine. Danielle. Please unmute yourself, Danielle. Welcome, Danielle. Darcy. Hi, everybody. This is Darcy calling in from Washington, D.C. area. Welcome. Dot. Dot Maver, Walpole, New Hampshire, USA. Welcome. Fatima. Hello, my my friends. I'm in, in Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. Good uh, to talk to you. Welcome. Fred. Fred, please unmute yourself. I'm sorry. Greetings to everybody from Fred in Deerfield Beach, Florida, USA. 
Welcome. Helen. Um, yep. Yeah. Helen from uh, near London in England. Welcome. Shane. Shane, please unmute yourself. Welcome, Jane. Judy. Hello, this is Judy Harrison from Brewster, Massachusetts, USA. Welcome. Catherine. Hi, Catherine Davison from San Antonio, Texas, USA. Welcome. Kim. Welcome, Kim. Margo. Greetings, everyone. Margo Rush calling in from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, on the Pacific Coast. Welcome. Maria Cristina. Maria Cristina Donadieu calling from the Arizona Sonora Desert, Tucson, Arizona. USA. Welcome. Maria. Maria Michaelis calling from Taos County, New Mexico, USA. Welcome. Marion. It shows that Marion is all offline. Yeah. Welcome, Marion. Martine. Hello, it's Martin Dupont from Belgium. Welcome. Maureen. Maureen, please unmute yourself. You are unmuted, but we cannot hear you probably this problem with microphone. Welcome, Maureen. Neil, or Nelly, sorry. Nelly Vukonic, Rijeka, Croatia. Welcome. Nina. Hello. Hi, this is Nina Meyer, up from Vermont. Welcome. Thank you. Olga. Olga, please unmute yourself. Uh, hello, Olga Delizianis from Athens, Greece. Thank you. Welcome. Pat. Pat, please unmute yourself. Welcome, Pat. Rose Fata. Rosita, please unmute yourself. I'm Rosita, bringing in from Sussex in the south of England. Welcome. Santana. Uh, Santana calling in from Aptos in Northern California, USA. Welcome. Silvana. Hello, everybody. It's Silvana DePredo from Melbourne, Australia. 
welcome. And there's also Sarah Thank Sweeta. you, everyone. Oh, did I miss? I don't have it. Rasuita Grass. No. We welcome you. Yes, welcome. Thank you, everyone. Now that we are linked together as a group, let us share a few moments in silence to align, forming a triangle between Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. May our efforts be of the highest vibration in selfless service for our purpose. Over to you, Rebecca. Thanks, Tracy. It's beautiful to hear all the names and the locations from so, so far across the world. So my job now is to in, uh, introduce Martha, who will introduce our action area group this month. Um, and the action area group and other interested meditators gathered to contemplate our topic of sharing in the new economy at the time of the full moon of the Aquarius month this month. Um, and the impressions generated from that work at the full moon time have been held and brooded over by the action area group and subjective meditations, meditators um, during this preparation phase of the webinar in the second part of the moon cycle up to the time of the new moon. So the action area group this month is um, also a rich combination of people from four different nations. So it's a great pleasure to hand over now to Martha who will introduce them all to us. Over to you, Martha. Hello everyone and welcome to uh, this group. Uh, the presenters today are part of a larger group, a Sunday meditation group known as the Creative Flow of Money. And the group meets weekly as a unit of service in the Ashram of Synthes to redirect the current flows of money in alignment with the will to good. Our work is ever adapting so as to reconstruct, reconstitute, and reform the current system toward an economy appropriate to the new civilization. We currently number uh, 20 servers in uh, eight different countries, now four continents, and represent a manifestation from the three years meditation series offered uh, upon the 17 Sustainable Development Goals by the 2025 Initiative during the New Moon webinar. We appreciate the presence of so many of the Sunday meditators um, here today. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. As an introduction to Sunday's Creative Lab, we are going to harness the creative energies now available at this Aquarian new moon. First, some introductory thoughts from a few of our group members, and then some creative meditation work. My coworkers and I, representing four countries and three continents, are going to present seed thoughts for the unfoldment of the new economy, an economy where right sharing and right human relations are paramount, where the economic ecosystem is reconstituted energetically, reconstructed for sustainability, and reformed to serve the many. We gather today within the energies of the Aquarian new moon, a new cycle that is extraordinary in its potency and for its auspicious timing. The year 2020 brought us 
the Saturn-Pluto conjunction and all that followed, the collective burning ground, physically, spiritually, politically, and economically. Every aspect of human expression has been under duress, which is an invitation for humanity to open our collective hearts and open our eyes to the changing world and our part in it. As we traveled this path of fire, humanity looked to the water bearer for relief. And at the 2020 Capricorn solstice, our cup was filled by Jupiter and Saturn conjunct hand in hand at the first degree of Aquarius. The esoteric ruler of Aquarius is second ray Jupiter, and it put its spiritual imprint on Saturn's coming journey through Aquarius. No longer just the planet of limitation as understood in its lower nature, but Saturn is released in its initiatory power. Those two planets, Jupiter and Saturn, are now joined in Aquarius by the Sun, the Moon, Mercury, and Venus. Soul, personality, head, and heart. And this new moon cycle is enhanced through this extraordinary Aquarian group. This grouping of planets, or stellium, is powered by disruptive Uranus, in the Aquarian, which is the Aquarian ruler. And it is squaring the group from the, the sign of Taurus, 90 degrees away, also a fixed sign, the fixed cross of the disciple. What new forms will be produced by this electric fire? What transformative opportunities are waiting to be born? How can we discover and reveal the light? Those are the questions we hope to begin to answer today. The power of Aquarius is in the human factor, the chalice of group activity pouring its lighted substance, bringing down the intuited ideas and forming them in concrete and scientific ideals, pouring forth to those who thirst. Soul and emotion, mind and love, form and expansion, focused through the lens of human need, enlivened by energetic disruption. Water of life am I poured forth to those who thirst. In the 11th great labor for the 11th sign of Aquarius, it is said that Hercules, the son of God, who is the son of man, Hercules, the disciple incarnate, used his great power to cleanse the Aegean stables. In the land of King of Geus, there was a horrible stench and a plague, and Hercules was sent to see what he could do. The vast Aegean stables had become uncleanable, clogged with stagnant waste and creating a vile stench. Illness and death spread across the land. Hercules offered his services to the king who was suspicious of the stranger who asked no payment, but agreed to humor the disciple, thinking that Hercules would fail like so many before him. Then Hercules set to work. The great disciple surveyed the situation and took stock of the resources available and formed a plan. He broke holes in each end of the great stable and through extreme effort, changed the course of two nearby rivers and used those great natural forces to wash away the vile murk. And much to the king's surprise, completed the labor in a single day. What can we learn from the great disciples approach? We take our stand as members of the new group of world servers in full alignment with the spiritual hierarchy and Shambhala. With, with Hercules, the world disciple, we stand and direct the flow 
of the two streams of Aquarian energy, the river of life and the river of love into the blocked and crystallized forms. It is now our intention to set the stage for meditation by providing a quick outline of our thinking on the three aspects of economic transformation, reconstituting energetically, reconstructing for sustainability, and reforming to serve the many. First, Frida from Toronto, Canada, will talk about the energetic reconstitution. Then Aryo, speaking from Finland, will discuss reconstruction for sustainability. And Antoinette, speaking from South Africa, will talk about reforming to serve the many. Then with these three Aquarian ideals at the top of mind, we will enter into meditation. Over to you, Frida. Thank you, Jeffrey. So reconstituted energetically. As Rebecca mentioned, uh, she began this process with us at the time of the full moon and led us in a short meditation designed to elicit impressions with this theme of the new economy of sharing, gifting, and abundance. Now this theme resonated with me deeply. And what came up for me during this meditation was the need to change our concept of charity. Our concepts of charity are embedded in Piscean thinking. And to achieve right sharing, we need to look at these concepts and see what needs to be changed. Often we work within an operating paradigm and we are like fish swimming in a sea of ideas and thought forms, many that are ancestral and societal, but these often are rarely questioned and examined fully. But the three key thought forms of the Piscean age, which need to be carefully looked at in order to manifest the new economy are listed here. We need to transform scarcity thinking into thoughts of sufficiency or abundance. We need to transform our thinking around charity to one of right sharing. And we need to begin to regard the poor, in quotation marks, as our fellow citizens. So what is charity? One definition has charity as the voluntary giving of help, typically in the form of money to those in need or an organization set up to provide help and raise money for those in need. Now, this doesn't sound too bad, but if we look carefully, we see that this is very much a Christian ideal of charity, and it comes with considerable baggage. Dan Pelota, in his TED Talk on this subject, says the roots of our mistaken thinking around charity are embedded in the Calvinist uh, ideals and also I would add Puritan and Quaker morality. Now I work for a charity here in Canada called the Sharon Temple. This is a museum dedicated to a group called the Children of Peace. And this was a Christian Quaker community. And within that temple, there are four pillars that represent these Christian ideals. And on those four pillars are written peace, hope, love, and charity. So what is wrong with this Christian ideal? Well, I believe it comes with this idea that a privileged group, through their beneficence, aid the deserving poor. Embedded in this are concepts of condescension and privilege. No wonder many recipients of charity resent the experience so deeply and have feelings of humiliation and shame at receiving charity. So if we're to transform this thinking into an Aquarian ideal, we need to embrace the idea that there is no scarcity, only abundance, and all that needs to happen is for us to properly share and distribute 
the resources that we already have. And that right sharing is one of the responsibilities of citizenship. There really are no poor, only fellow citizens with a specific need. And we can see this long-standing idea coming to the fore in COVID times, and that is the principle of having a guaranteed income. This income could be received without any shame or uh, humiliation. And here are a couple of quotes that I have uh, prepared. So the first one is from uh, Discipleship in the New Age too. Here, the Master DK tells us that the principle of sharing, which must govern the economic relations in the future, is a soul quality or energy. And another thought coming from studies on the principle of sharing by Homan Sofian Mesbahai is that sharing is key to solving the world's problems. The nature of this principle is a powerhouse within the laws of life. And finally, another quote from Alice Bailey from Esoteric Healing, only through a sane and worldwide grasp of the new age principle of sharing will human ills be cured. So we can also see that the application, application of technology that can connect people from around the world, just like we're using today, and platforms that do this, like Kiva, that bring borrowers and lenders together for microcredit, uh, along with initiatives like the World Marshall Plan, will facilitate this idea of right sharing and which will uh, allow one-to-one -one connection with people around the world. But I do believe that it will take a shift in our thinking, our basic thought forms from charity to right sharing before these platforms or technologies will have a worldwide impact. Well, thank you everyone. And I'm now going to turn it over to Aryo, who's going to present some ideas on sustainability. Over to you, Aryo. Thank you, Frida. <clears throat> Reconstructed for sustainability. Climate crisis is the serious challenge we have now, and we have to take it seriously. It is question how to maintain planet Earth and its ecosystems viable for all living beings here who are fulfilling their own development line. Denials are mainly oil companies and those who think that their business is going down. Material resources on Earth are limited. So the idea of constant economical growth has to be abundant. Almost all resources can be given a monetary value if we want to. For energy production should be used only renewable energy sources. Solar, wind, ocean energy, geothermal, biogas, hydrogen, free energy. Maybe this free energy is not yet available, but hopefully soon. For those, I don't include nuclear energy due to an unsolved waste problems. Also, energy saving is a big in a big role as well as reusing products, recycling materials, metal, glass, cardboard, paper, plastics, bio waste, and so on, and producing goods to last years and design them to be re repairable, no disposable ones. In all actions, keep in mind what kind of effects, direct or indirect, they are creating. The most effective climate action for an individual person is to become vegetarian. As the previous IPCC chair, Rahendra K. Pauchari, has mentioned, 
okay to become with vegan is even better. Producing one color with the meat protein consumes averagely 11 times more fossil fuels and also CO2 emissions than if it is produced with the vegetable, vegetable protein. The following associations, the National Abudon Society, the World Watch Institute, Sierra Club, the Union of Con Concerned Scientists and Al Gore's Live Earth have mentioned that breeding animals for food production is spoiling environment more than any other actions we do. Better veg vegetarianism is also health and ethical matter. More vegetarians, less medical services are needed, at least for in, in the long run. Biolo biological production is essential to, to due to pollinators and environmental poisoning. Sustainability keeps in it also an idea that nature, ground, water, air are not polluted. Permaculture ideas mimic nature, care for people, care for earth, share the surplus, give good practical methods how to put sustainability into practice. Consider to use part of your golden money energy for sustainable development for master plan. I have tried to put above ideas into practice in my life, so I would uh, uh, tell what I have done and I hope to inspire you. I became vegetarian 47 years ago and been vegan more than 22 years now. I have driven with biogas car 14 years. I am monthly, monthly donator for Greenpeace, UNICEF, Save the Children, Amnesty International, Amazon Watch, Health, Helping Telephone for Young and for Youth and Young Adults, Support for Disabled. I hope to inspire you also to put these ideas into practice. To reach sustainability, we have to change our thinking and uh, utilization of resources. Okay, and now I would give the floor to Antoinette, please. Thank you, Aria. I'm here to talk about reform to serve the many. Master Jesus, the Buddha and Christ were set to send disciples to bring about reform in the Department of Religions and of Education and place groups of spiritually minded financiers to take hold of the world economic situation to bring about the great and needed changes. Here's a quote from Intellect to Intuition, Alice Bailey, and page 202. Confucius taught us centuries ago that implements of civilization were highly spiritual in nature, for they were the result of ideas. Who she tells us in that very interesting symposium, Wither Mankind, that civilization which makes the fullest possible use of human ingenuity and intelligence in search of truth in order to control nature and transform matter for the service of mankind to liberate the human spirit from ignorance, superstition, 
and slavery to the forces of nature and to reform social and political institutions for the benefit of the greatest number." Unquote. We as humanity live in a temporary form that has been conditioned through the ages by culture, religion, society and other factions. Taking myself as an example in this way, individualized or crystallized form. I spun this web of glamours, traumas, culture, social conditioning, experiences intertwined through energies and forces creating my future experiences. And then I came to know about mind, an objective and subjective, the personality and the soul, about the thinking patterns of personalized personality based on form, life in form, and the picturesque manifestation of the subjective mind beautifully and energetically weaving life in form. As soon I realized that all is not well with this picture. In some places, there is the blue, blue sky and others, the deep dark of the ocean. This is the work of crystallization of the personality distorting the plan or the idea. And I'm the alchemist of these crystals, so I should then have the recipe to undo this distortion. So what to do? In times like this, we all reach upwards, a spiritual being having a human experience. The faithful servant or the subjective mind needs to get the right instruction, not from the individualized mind, but to rethink. This must come from a level that is elevated from the current situation. So in recognition of the existence of the creative principle in all, this very same example can be applied to money or finances as humanity is the macrocosm. Currently, the personality of humanity is creating this life focused on material things through the medium of crystallized energy called money. There are vast numbers of limitations to the supply and the sharing of money as it is in this crystallized form mat and in the hands of the privileged to maybe obtain a car, house, cell phone, whatever it is serving form. The realization that this supply cannot supply the need of the many. An alchemical formula is needed to bring equality through right thinking. And right instruction then is needed. This is where the thinkers or the meditators are needed in the world. Instead of money as the objective, how about a subjective elevated format as the abundance of the universe that is free for all of life on earth, rightly used, utilized in sustaining all that is having its experience on earth. How about right sharing, right relations between all kingdoms flowing through from the kingdom of souls? This is the work of the new group of all servers and those disciples serving as souls, directing the Aquarian flowing of the water of the river of life and the river of love, clearing out all crystallized forms, serving the individual to serving the many. The universe is already abundant. Through bringing this abundance in line with the creative principle, the new idea and the plan for all of life on earth will be abundant and, in, and will fulfill the 17 sustainable development goals. The new economy subjectively supplied to serve the many. The meditation for the redirection of the planetary energy supply is the blueprint for reconstruction and transformation of the world finances and the sustainability of all. We meet every Sunday and everyone is welcome to join us. Thank you. My synthesizing statement will then be, 
reformation of human institutions is necessary for the new economy. The personality of humanity must become the instrument of the soul of humanity to serve the many. Thank you. Thank you, Antoinette. We will now move to the meditative part of our program. We're going to have four short periods of silent reflection, each preceded by a keynote from one of our speakers. We will then take what we've gathered in our group chalice and distribute it with the great invocation. Let us begin with an alignment. Let's gather ourselves for meditation, beginning with our personal space. Feel your body, the rise and fall of your breath. Relax, relax your shoulders and neck. Relax your jaw. Now soften your eyes and bring your attention the luminous center between the eyebrows. With one pointed attention, turn your gaze inward and upward to the thousand petaled lotus. And from this center, we stand in light to do our work. Our first meditative focus is the new moon cycle with the Aquarian light poured through the six named planets, each a great life. The sun, the moon, Jupiter, Saturn, Mercury, and Venus. Water of life am I poured forth to those who thirst.
right sharing is a soul quality. Earth Sustainability Transformation from serving the individual to serving the many.
gently now. Let us gather, gather in thought, in thought around the lighted chalice. See in your imagination as one by one, we add our accumulated insights into the group chalice. Now from this lighted circle, let us distribute the fruits of our group effort using the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human minds. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May the coming one return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills. The purpose which the masters know and serve. And from the center which we call the human race, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh.
we stay for a few more minutes in silence, precipitating our impressions. I invite you to take notes of your impressions and if you can, we encourage you to share them on the collaboration page. The link is in the chat window. You can access and write impressions right there. We invite you now to open our circle for sharing with our voices. And uh, please raise your hand if you would like to share something in the circle.
Andrea, please unmute yourself. Um, I'll lead off. I had a beautiful image that I think I'd like to share. Um, I, I invoked the spirit of generosity and found myself with an image of a divine mother figure um, who universally and unconditionally nurtures and provides for the needs of all of her children. And the image I got was that she had beautiful, enormous breasts that were providing an ever-flowing, limitless, ubiquitous supply of sustenance um, and very like unto the Aquarian water bearer in that that flow had no limit and was constantly being regenerated and regenerated and regenerated. And that she was ignorant of any differences within her family of children. Um, and really became this extraordinary example of right sharing as she sort of gave from her soul light, love, nurturance to, to all, to all of her children. And that she created a sustainability in that process because she was leading and teaching her children by example. And they, in turn, learn to share with one another as a collective group of true soul brothers and sisters who saw each other and the group that they comprised from eyes that were looking outward from within and, as a result, oblivious to their separate selves. And it was just this magnificent sort of ever flowing image that was being provided to all of humanity by that spirit of generosity. It, it, it wasn't charity. No, no, no. No, it was generosity that comes from deep within a soul without anything more than just feeling that you are one within all. And that's all. Thank you, Andrea. I would also like to thank you, Andrea, this is Martha, for the beautiful image, as well as the image in the chat left by Tracy. There seems to be a growing awareness about the mother of the world, um, reflecting in alert receptivity a fusion with the Lord of Civilization, the Lord of the World, which we know as Ray Three. What often happens in as we meditate on infrastructures that really require shifts in our thinking and the buddhic level um, in, in enters into human initiative, we begin to understand more deeply what's meant by right relation. That as we work to address the planetary needs that have become so evident today, as mentioned in the COVID opportunity to see 
how things can work so much better. That the right relationship that upon which we call, which we understand as universal brotherhood, how active the our elders are in galvanizing that energy and how important it is to shift our focus from individual well-being to group well-being. Uh, there's the wonderful concept most of us know called Ubuntu, Ubuntu, <laughs> U-M-B-U-N-T-U. You know, I am you. I be I am because of you. You are because of me. So the if anything in Aquarius new moon time to see that there is unlimited sufficiency once we've tapped into the soul. And there's nothing more practical that we could do to make the changes that we see. Thank you. Thank you for the lovely presentation. The, the unity among the group was very evident. Up you know, the thread from Martha. One of the impressions that came through the meditations that this principle of abundance coming from the soul level, universe is abundant. The energy of soul is abundant. So when we tapped into this soul consciousness that's where that river of life and river of love can be unleashed and indeed as Arya said in the earth's resources are limited that they can be managed sustainably and shared if we function from the level of soul and if from that level we recognize needs of each other and we manage our own desires living more simple life on a physical plane and uh, the thought, another thought that came in meditation is that the exoteric ruler of Aquarius is Uranus. It's a planet of revolution, planet of radical transformation. And the more of Aquarian energy supported through, the more stimulation masses of people get receive and what is important for us as esotericists and working esoteric groups to remember that revolution of consciousness is what is our focus and revolution of consciousness allows us to tap into that soul energy abundance Revolutions in the physical plane, as this history shows, lead just to more suffering. And at the end of the day, yes, suffering it serves a great evolutionary purpose and leads to unfoldment of consciousness. But we can avoid unnecessary suffering, putting our effort into revolution of consciousness that will manifest as evolution in transformation of social institutions as fourth ray coming uh, 
there are more and more of energies of conflict and chaos will be unleashed and we need to learn how to transform it into harmony and for that again that revolution of consciousness will help us to manage evolutionary smooth peaceful transformation of our systems in accordance with the plan thank you and that please unmute yourself this is Annette Löffler. Um, as humanity is uh, taking the, for, the, the, the first initiation, initiation uh, we are um, like in, in the, the individual uh, person, we are building the uh, buddhic body of humanity. And the energy of buddhi is unity. And the more unity, the, the easier we can get this harmony of the force ray and um, abundance uh, thought uh, in, in, in the whole uh, humanity. Um, so I, I think uh, it is also helping um, um, on the way that uh, we are uh, with, with the career and uh, energy uh, which is uh, in the same level um, so that that was just some thoughts I had thank you There's mm, several comments being shared. Um, I, uh, Rebecca, would you be willing to read them um, as I'm reposting them in a chat because they show up as questions that only organizers and panelists see, but um, I'm trying to make them seen to everyone. Sure, and while you're doing that, um... In the chat, um, there's also an invitation from the the um, group today um, that if you would like to meditate with them on Sundays, um, you can contact Martha and they meet at noon Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. GST, GMT. Um, <clears throat> uh, Tracy's image that... Um, Martha referred to before, I saw the image of a great indigo coloured mountain on its side like an arrow with its tip piercing through an oval white cloud-like ring. Um, and Josette has already spoken I think but um, when the principle of sharing prevails the earth will become a planet of light. Um, Santana says, I appreciated the insights from the presentations. And that's all I have at the moment. Is there more that I, um, from Helen? Okay. Um, the two breast miners are energized by the heart center. So referring to perhaps this beautiful image of the mother principle. <laughs> um, so go on. The two breast miners are energized by the heart center so that abundant flow of life comes from the qualities of love, 
and justice. And from Risa, sharing releases us from the conditions of materiality. Sharing as giving creates joy, a soul quality. We are getting close to the end of our time there. Uh, a couple more hands were raised. Uh, um, Maria, Maria Cristina, if you would like to share, please unmute yourself. Well, thank you. That was quite excellent. I wasn't going to, but I really had an insight when considering the visual, uh, well, Hercules task of the water pouring in to cleanse the stables, cleanse our polluted planet, but a hole is made on both ends of the stable. So it became this great pouring through. It really, that's what really enabled that stream to happen, this alignment from the source and as it stood or poured through in that light and that love, um, things kind of, the pollution goes back to its proper place, so to speak, into and flowing out into the lower kingdoms. So that it became, anyway, it was, um, hmm, it, it had to do with a sense of, I mean, as has been said, it's all here. It's a matter of just right distribution or right juxtaposition. Anyway, it was a lovely influx from a slightly different perspective. Thank you. And of course, that Uranus, oh, that Uranus in relation to all those Aquarian planets, Uranus in the house of resources, oh, what wonderful energies and opportunities we are given. And there's one more note in the chat here from Christine. There's no doubt that we're in the beginning of a second renaissance, but at a higher point in the spiral. Being grounded is essential. And I do this with high vibration essential oils. Um, and there's a thank you here from Santana. Thank you for this wonderful presentation and meditation. I would like information on the time of the Creative Lab on Sunday. And I think that's already in the chat box, Santana, but it says Sundays um, noon Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. GMT is the time that um, the meeting is held. And if you would like to contact Martha, her um, email is in the chat here, marthagallahue at gmail.com. Thank you, Rebecca, and thank you, Santana, for this segue, because um, besides this weekly meditation, I believe uh, Santana is asking about the common creative lab. So, and that's a, a, a good segue for us to Sorry. announce our, our common webinars, and uh, absolutely no worries. Uh, if, Frida, would you like to say a few words about the creative lab that will be on February 14th? Focalized uh, yes. and organized by your group. Um, so we have put together a creative lab, which really delves a bit deeper into some of these themes that we presented today, um, and also presents some new models for the new economy. And uh, we feel this is important because I think it's the collective group mind that if we can uh, put our attention to some of these models, we will help to bring them uh, to be. We've only, we're only presenting, I think, four models. We know there's a lot more, um, but I think you'll really enjoy it. 
and uh, it's at 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. And um, I'm sure Alex, oh, here it is. It's up on the screen. Thank you. And uh, I will put um, into the chat box the link, uh, registration link for the uh, coming Creative Lab. Um, the announcement was already sent out, but just as a reminder, here is the link uh, to register for the coming um, Creative Lab. And also you can see on the screen our other coming webinars. We come to the end of the annual cycle as we follow the cycle from Aries to Pisces. And so we come in into the Pisces as sun moves, we follow the sun. And so on February 25th, we invite you to join the solar festival to celebrate together with Heidi Robbins and the group, the our eternal journey of love following the river of love and light and life. And with this, I also want to um, invite you to another part of our long journey as we go into the Pisces cycle. In the next cycle, with our focus on the common good, we invite us to bring our focus to the topic of dissipating the fear of death. And that's um, as uh, through our work with the meditation for the common good in the science of mutable cross, we focus on the right relationships on all the levels and in Pisces we bring our focus to right relationship on harmonizing our individual and our collective as humanities relations to the topic of death and so we invite you to join the coming full moon meeting where we will meditate together on the vision invoking our understanding our group understanding of what are the thought forms that we want to bring into our meditation at the following new moon the same as we did together bringing our focus to the topic of the economy of uh, sharing and abundance the same, we invite us to come together at the full moon of Pisces, invoke our understanding, and all the focus on this topic for the following two weeks. This meeting will be open for anyone, and uh, there will be additional announcements coming about that. And following that meditation, we would invite those who inspired to join the action area group who the same would come together to share their synthesis statement at the coming new moon webinar. And also, uh, just as a reminder, like earlier, uh, when we started this cycle of meditation for the common good, uh, we define the themes for each month through the resonance board and we asked if any of you is resonating uh, with what topics and uh, we, uh, if you indicated that you're interested in this theme we will be contacting you to see if you are still interested to step in into the action area group so don't be surprised if you receive that email soon with this, with this all my announcements are over and over to you, Rebecca, if I forget to mention anything, if not, then lead us into the closing, please. Thank you. I think you've covered everything beautifully. Um, I would just also um, invite if anyone is interested in 
coming to the preliminary action area group meeting, um, which will be inviting those of you who already um, expressed interest in this topic too. But every, other people are welcome to that meeting too. And if you would like to come along and find out a little bit more about um, how you could be involved in an action area, please um, email us in the feedback after the webinar um, to say that you're interested and we'll send you a link. Um, and that first meeting, it's not a set in stone commitment, so you don't have to worry about if you attend, you'll be roped in, um, but it's a great place to find out what, what can happen as part of an action area group. And um, this month and last month, we've had groups who were already um, formed as coherent groups. Um, and um, previous months, we were experimenting with just drawing um, members of uh, this circle together in a, in a looser format and that's probably what we'll be doing next month. Um, so it it's, doesn't involve an onerous amount of work but we so much value everything that anyone puts in. So if you would like to just come along and find out about the action area for next month, please email us and we'll send you the link as I said. So um, as we come to a close now, let's just um, take a minute of silence and gratitude for the work together today. And um, let's sound the noontide recollection which so much encapsulates our work today. We know, O oh Lord of light and love, about the need. Touch our hearts anew with love, that we too may love and give. Oh.